Hello everybody, and welcome back to some more Dwarf Fortress. And we're going to be doing adventure mode again, but this time I have the latest version of Dwarf Fortress with no mods. This is vanilla Dwarf Fortress, except for a texture pack, or a tile set, I should say. This is the, I'm going to try and say it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to say it correctly. Durer? Durer tile set? D-U-E-R-E-R, -E -E I think it is. Fucking impossible to say that. This is actually just going to be a video of uh, us making the world. Or, I don't know, I guess we can see. I'm going to make a large world. And, uh, I don't know, short history or medium? I guess we'll do medium. Number of sites. I don't know exactly what these mean. Still. This is how many distinct places can exist after the world generation. This controls how many distinct races and cultures there are. Hmm. I think I want higher on that one. Places exist after the world generation. Let's keep that medium. This increasing the setting makes large beasts more prevalent. We'll do high. I don't know exactly 100% sure what that does. I'm going to do high here too, and... Hmm. We are going to be doing a fortress mode eventually, so I should choose wisely here. I think I'm going to go with sparse, because this is just like the default... Oh yeah, love this tile set. You know, if you don't like the tile set, just let me know. Well, I'm saying, right? If you like uh, Dwarf Fortress and you'd like to see more in the future, along with any videos that you've seen, leave a like. That lets me know that you want to see more of said game on said video. And if you like what I do in general, and you'd like to get updates and stuff like that of when they come out, go ahead and subscribe. And if you get any kind of feedback, or just want to comment and say, hey, I'll say hey back. And if you like any of the other kind of games I could, uh, that I play, such as, I don't know what you want to call it, I was thinking about doing the playing Transistor coming up. I did a playthrough of Dungeon of the Endless recently. I'm going to do more of that coming up. And, uh, what else? Caves of Cut is going to be coming out eventually. I've been kind of just holding off. And, um, let's say Dungeon Crawl Stone Suit. I like playing a lot of the roguelikes, but I do play other games like, uh, Played Mountain Blade before. Uh, I'm not going to be doing multiplayer games like uh, Overwatch. I made a separate channel for that, and I'm going to be kind of on a hiatus on that one anyway. Coming back to focus on this one. Just love this tile set, man. Look at this. How beautiful it is. Kind of digging this music. Wait a second, I might have heard this song before. This might be the- this is Soma FM. And I think this might be the first time I recognized a song playing twice on this channel. So it's pretty rare occurrence. Ooh, hopefully this isn't like destroying my video. So it's video zero FPS.
And if you haven't played uh, Dungeon of the Endless, I actually enjoyed it. So maybe like look at the first video and just kind of get an idea of how it is. Then if you think it's something that you want to try, go ahead and try it. I got it on a Steam sale. I've been meaning to try it forever, but I kind of put it off and now I kind of... I really like it. I want to try the other games too by them. There's like Endless Legend and uh, Endless Space, I want to say. And the music. If you kind of like music on here, not really. It's a little different, but it's kind of got the same ambience I got going on in these videos. And it's the stock music. The music's great in that game. The art style's great too. Hmm, what does this go to? I think, uh. I can't remember which one. I think this goes to 250, or it goes to 150, I can't remember. Find out in a second. Ooh, we're going further. Know what that means? Open my beer. I wonder if I'm like the only person that has a uh, that records and has a beer bottle opener magneted to their microphone boon. It used to be on my fridge, but then one day I was brought into my room and stuck it to there, and I never took it away. It's the shape of a uh, football, I mean. I don't even watch football, but for some reason it's just works right there. Some of the most entertaining shit I've ever done. Should I make it even better? Should I go get some chips? I'll go get some chips. Yeah, since I have such long videos, I end up uh, making sure I have a two liter of soda next to me and uh, a secondary drink. Secondary drinks usually iced tea, some kind of mix something, or uh, a beer. Before getting my high quality om doms. Still kind of afraid because the FPS is zero. This went a lot faster last time. One problem about changing tile sets is I have no idea what anything means now. I mean, I get the mountains and stuff. Fortresses and maybe some other things. The rivers, kinda. 
think I see an evil tower. That might be it. Is that a volcano down there? Might be a volcano down there. Hmm. There it is. Right there. That might be a volcano. Mountains. This is a fortress. Fortresses. Can't remember what the different colors are, like what this is. Pretty sure this is an evil tower. These eyes. I normally play with, uh, what do you call it? Iron Hand. This is what I've been using forever. So it's like after, I mean, I I could play with two. Play ASCII or ASCII. I say ASCII, I don't know. It doesn't sound like something should be shortened, but everybody says it, uh, ASCII. I just say it how I fucking feel like saying it. Along with like everything. Another one is, no, it makes no sense, but I say Qui. I used to say Qui forever for uh, Q. That one's a little goofy, though. That. So I could play the ASCII uh, normal mode, and this has kind of uh, got a lot of that in it. It's not uh, this one doesn't actually have like icons and stuff for different characters and whatnot. I think it's all um, just the letters and stuff. And the Iron Hand is what I normally use if I do have a tile set. And normally when I'm recording, I do a tile set such as Iron Hand, because it looks, just makes it a little more readable for everybody else. But I know there's some people out there like seeing the ASCII. Yes, like to watch and take a look at that ass. Oh, there we go. I don't know what the hell I'm even looking at. Whoops. <gasps> that just happened. Well, not too sure if I'm just going to skip through this or not. Prepare for fast forward mode. Even though that looked like it was fast forward mode, it wasn't. That's going to be starting any minute. Probably when I'm done talking. I just ended up cutting that part out. Yeah, I figured out what I did. I was gonna try and move around the map. I don't even think you could do that in here. Movement keys to view. Yeah. See, I was, uh, I tried to use WASDA, and as soon as I clicked A, fucking abort. 
Well, let's not do that again. I don't know. The reason why I separate the world gen videos sometimes is because uh, not everybody likes seeing that long, drawn out stuff anyway, so. If somebody does watch that. Now you're one of those hardcore people that like to see it all. I don't mind it watching it myself, but you know, everybody's different. At least this gives an option to just get to the meat of the game. One thing I didn't mention is I'm thinking we're going to go check out the history a little bit. Even though I don't really know how to use Legends mode. A little bit. I know how to use it a little bit. Um, historical events left to discover. Zero. I don't know what that means. Zoom in on a. Uh, ooh, let's check out the Hydra. Exod Lusto. Less. Lustotesnar. Ochre Greg. Exod Divid Glen. The Plain Rocks. A male rock. I fucking meant to do this one. I'm gonna skip that first part and go to straight to the Wur. Kev Golds. The Canyon of Courage. Male Hydra. Where Cav Golds, the Canyon of Courage, was a Hydra. He was one of the only ones of his kind. Where was associated with strength, rebirth, and muck. And one, were settled in the Silky Finger. In the midspring of four, where became an enemy of the Torment of Ringing. Along with the Wicked Evils. At the same time, or the same period, were devoured a troll of the Torment of Ringing and Curse Carrier. And also, he attacked the goblin Atu Spiderites. Or fought with the goblin Atu Spiderites while defeated the latter, escaped unscathed. No, defeated the latter, escaped all of them. Uh, unsaved. Where devoured a troll of the torment of rain, curse scary. He also devoured a beak dog of the torment of rain, curse scary. Where devoured a troll, another troll. This time he actually devoured it. Like, ate the whole thing. And then the early... Uh, it, it died out a little bit. Until the spring of 44. War began... Became an enemy of the Ivy of Grasping. Along with the Basin of Gritters. Where it the Elf Damidi. Portal. Heathers. Also fought with the Elf Damidi. Nope. Nope, the other one actually, he actually escaped, so he got out of there. Uh, same period, war fought with an elf, I uh, no. Devoured a dingo of the ivy of gasping, grasping, and mountain search. Also, war attacked the elf, arcane bulls peaked. War shook down the elf. And devoured him. Jesus. Then were devoured a water buffalo cow of the ivy grasping in a mountain search, along with a bull. <sighs> Six years later, where became an enemy of the squid of colors, along with the taf typhoon of bearing. Were devoured a wombat in this area, and the squid of colors, and still spattered. And also a Kotai, which I'm not too sure what that is. And a Kakapo. And then attack the Elf Lali Den Lengths. Or shut down the Elf. Or devour the Elf afterwards. Uh, about 18 years later, war became an enemy of the Witch of Scour 
uh, scorching, along with the flickering curses and attacked the goblin and royal scorpion. First took down the goblin and devoured him. And blah 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 blah. In uh, 87, the elf Aif Windcover confronted Wurr. Wurr struck down the elf in the silky finger. Is there nobody mighty enough to take down Wurr? Wurr struck down the elf, another elf. Two different elves tried. In 127, the dwarf Udo Cusplitz confronted Wurr. And the 127 war struck down the same dwarf. And more war, more attacks, more stuff. We fought with the human. In uh, 232, war attacked the human Pathril Vice Crabs. War fought with the human Pathril Vice Crabs while defeated the latter escaped unscathed. A lot of enemies and stuff, and apparently he might still be alive for us to end up getting a quest for. 19 notable kills, with 60 other kills. A formidable beast. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh a dragon and a hydra. No, very sad dragons. Not the uh, bronze classes. Take the dragon! Excuse me. Lusnub settled in the prime jungle. Lusnub flicker attacks. The gilded diamond was a dragon. He was one of the only ones of his kind. Lusnub was associated with wealth and fire. As dragons are usually known to be. Hmm. Lusnub attacked the Coalition of Twilight at Wemgleeful. Struck down a plethora of human settlers. Stalith Special Bath. Ulit Puzzle Spongy. Kudver Burn Clinch. Etad Rainhug. Usi Magic Through. Mortal Stoke Suitor. Vispel Union Stops. And Lusnub routed the Coalition of Twilight of the Purple Nation and destroyed Wim Gleeful. Oh. Then the very next year. Yeah, the next year. Lusnub attacked the Occult Hill at Roar Sound. Struck down the elf Ail for Tempt. Ooh, and another elf, Perry Spreedrose, a right eye, was torn out by Lusnub. And also struck down a just a whole shitload of more people. And Lusnub routed a cult hill of the smooth incenses and destroyed Roar Sound. This is a destroyer of towns and villages and stuff. So attack and devour. Ooh, and he steals things? What a dick. All the killing and stuff was fine, but until he stole them, a monitor lizard bone earring from ta Tax Catch. This is too far. The elf, a little, okay. And 30, the elf lead, Dunes Blaze, confronted Loose Snub. Loose Snub struck down this fool and the prime jungle. Uh, Lusna became an enemy of a bunch more places and devoured a bunch of elves, a mule, and an iguana. And uh, the year 45, a Carambola wood scepter was stolen from the Canyon Mansion. And he became a bunch more enemies. The human Gib Mopdead confronted Lusnub. Lusnub just struck down the human in the Pine Trunk. So he must have been bunkering in the prime jungle. Look at this kill list.
Uh, elf Rofa confiscated, confronted Lu Snub, and Lu Snub just struck down Rofa as well. And you can find them in the prime jungle, it appears, because the human Rallin flashy marked confronted Lu Snub as well. Lu Snub struck down the human as well in the prime jungle. So. If he goes to the prime jungle, he could probably run into this person. I mean, this fear, fearsome beast. The dragon, loose snub. Wait a minute. Just don't care. Ooh. 39 kills. And 119 other kills. Ooh, and they're humans and stuff. Not just animals, like I thought they were. Right, let's check out... Bufut is... is Rathamatal. Tamal. Gomurusher. Bufut jewels savers the prestigious quakes, the Bronze Colossus. Ah, Bufut. Jewel Savers, the bronze, prestigious of Quakes, is a bronze colossus. It was one of the only ones of its kind. Bufoot was associated with war strength and mute metals. My bad. Bufoot settled in the Spotted Hill. Year 20, Bufoot became an enemy of the Ancient Fellowship and the Contingent Empire. Bufoot attacked the human Old Dent Surprises and also fought with the human. Uh, fought with the human. Okay, so he escaped unscathed. Well, no, I probably... No, it says unscathed. How did they fight in one bronze... I fought a bronze colossus. It's not a fun experience. Usually death awaits you. Buffet attacked the human Angdul Bright's grasp. Then he struck him down. In the Brim Fords. In 34, the human Disso Sticks Tours ambushed Buffett. Buffett struck down the human Disso Stick Tours in the Spotted Hill. That was a foolish mistake, you silly person. And in the mid spring of 69, Buffett became an enemy of the Ten Browse Eagles, the Triangular Fern, and he attacked the Quathery Rainhail, the elf. Bufoot fought with the elf and, uh, while defeated, the latter escaped unscathed. Bufoot attacked the elf, Nino waved justices, and the same thing happened. She's not very, uh, good at killing people. Until now, Bufoot ambushed the human, Stippoth Foggy. Bufoot struck down the human in the Spotted Hill. Bufoot ambushed the human. To hit Sun Ravers and struck that human down as well. Let's keep all further ahead. Two forty five, the human I do Smith Squirts happened upon Buffett. I know Smith's left lower leg was smashed by Bufoot. And he managed to escape Bufoot's onslaught. And then this foolish person decided to come back and ambush Bufoot. The Bronze Colossus. What happens? Edo Smith Squirt's right lower leg was smashed by Bufoot. Yep. He came back for more pain. And then Buffett struck down the silly human in the Spotted Hill. In the early spring of 249, Buffett became an enemy of the Fellowship of Diving and attacked the human Satet Futurains. Buffett struck down the human. Oh, on the Spring Drazer. Um, also attacked and fought the human Congo Squash Laces. And except that person escaped along with. Tis hate hate heated city. Tis heated city. My bad. Let's 
see what we got down here. Wow, look at that list. Related sites. No notable kills. But, it's got 25 kills. Just random humans and a bunch of nobodies. Ooh, let's see this last one. Hmm, not very much here. But other uh, Iltar was a forgotten beast. It was the only one of its kind. An enormous three-eyed mite. It has lacy wings and it has a gaunt appearance. Its gray exoskeleton is wrinkled, but where its webs Bodad was associated with water, misery, and caverns. In a time before time, Bodad began wandering the depths of this world. Uh, these guys got some history. No, oh, no history? I don't want to read them then. Okay, maybe I'll read one more. How about that? Stuxil, the suckers of frothing, was a forgotten beast. It was the only one of its kind, a huge scaly scorpion that has a thin wings of stretched skin and is ravening. Sea green scales are blocky and close set. To where its poison sting, Stuxil was associated with the depravity and caverns. And a time before a time, Stuxel began wandering the depths of this world. Mm -hmm. Man, a lot of forgotten bees. Holy crap. I'm just holding this down. I still haven't seen anything other than forgotten bees so far. Dwarven God? Let's check that out. The Sienna Paints was a deity that occurs in the myths of the Vault of Praises. Shen was most often depicted as a male dwarf and was associated with jewels and wealth. Um, so let's check out the... I like dwarves. Let's check out dwarves. The female dwarf. Ah, Savresh. Emerald Glove was a dwarf. She was one of the most. She was one of the first of her kind. Sarvesh settled it, and treaties searched. It's mid spring of number and mid spring of the first year, the fault of praises held a foot race, and slip slips slip lashed. It looks like a T to me. It might be slip lashed as part of the celebration of bridging. There were six competitors. Nope, it's not a T. Six competitors, including Servish, Monum Herring, was the victor. In the midspring of the number, midspring of one, the Vault of Praises held a mace, throwing competition in Splash, part of the celebration of bridging. There were five competitors, including Servish. Decad Smith Charcoal was the victor. Ah, in year two, Servish became a poet and treaty searched. In the midsummer. Wald Bend was authored by Surfish and Treaty Searched. Surfish settled in Conflict Datics, and then moved again the next year. And then one more time, and became a Baroness of the Vault of Praises in year 7. Early spring of seven, uh, 13, Surfish became obsessed with her own mortality and sought to extend her life by any means necessary. In late autumn of 25, the Vault of Praises held a spear-throwing competition at Ramper Twilted. As part of the Wald celebration, Savresh was the victor. And she won a lot of shit. A lot of spear-throwing happens. Spear-throwing happens to be her specialty, apparently. Um... Ooh, she just wins a lot. Salon, uh, Sarvesh Salon Singhesh just was a victor. Foot races and everything. She just became a beast. Don't blame her. A lot of competition. Look at all this competition. Oh, 
Oh, apparently she lived a pretty easy life. In the late of autumn of 95, the Fall of the Praises held a spirit throwing competition and ramp tilted as part of the wall of the celebration. Sarfesh was the victor. So about 95 years old. The year 96, Sarfesh died of old age. Ah. This just says force. Got a live elf here, I think. There's not much going on there. I'm gonna hold down the down key and see if we see anything else interesting. for a second and bam you and goddess don't care all right how about let's not get one that's a hundred thousand pages long so there's a 15 year old oops this one's a little more sad so I go to the, maybe the better one how about 29? 104 is a little long, but... Wada Blossom Crips was an elf. He is one of the first of his kind. In year one, Mawada settled in Flaxenclair. Year two, Mawada settled in Shove Beached. And then, uh, the next year, Mawada just began wandering wilds. And then settled in Gal uh, Smelled. No. Gale Smelled? Jesus. After four years. Late spring of 15, the Cyclops Rude Drive Vamber, the colors of Amethyst, attacked Moada. And uh, the Cyclops fought with Moada while defeated, the latter escaped and skated. Moada settled in Leap Dewards. And four years later, Moada settled in the Wispy Scar. 29. Wada confronted the Skyclops. You son of a bitch, you're fucking crazy, you're a crazy person. Try to go and attack the Cyclopses that ruin your village. Attack your village. You're just a man. You know, I mean, I guess you're just an elf. Maybe you thought you were made of better stuff or something. As in 29, Wada confronted the Cyclops. Read Sky Control, the powers of Twinkling. Wada was struck down by the Cyclops. And Summer Mines the Connected Hell. Poor, poor soul. Ah, Glade Steps. The Alchemical Fool is a cave. In the Mid Springs of 34, the Cyclops Korar. Prestige powers. The Scarlet Apex settled in the Glade Spice, the Alchemical Fool. And the spring of 118, the Cyclops Quarter Priestess, the Scarlet Apex settled back there again. Must have left and came back. Uh, let's see what the artifacts we got here. The human, my love, was a legendary. Sardonyx Bound Codex. The written portion consists of a 21-page essay entitled The Human My Love, authored by Arid Keyclairs. It concerns the marriage of the human Arid Keyclairs and the human Iskak Wiltaxes in year one. The writing contains some asides related to the author's preferences. Overall, the prose is passable. In the mid-autumn of 19, the human My Love was created What? My love was created and board washed by the human art keepers. In 80, human my love was lost in swamp fold. So that's neat. I think I'm gonna. I might just come back here, here and there. Maybe I'll just make some videos of just reading through this, because there's some neat things in here. Especially the artifacts sounded pretty cool. About the structures. Let's read one more. 
Ooh, Underworld Spire. The Granite Citadel was an Underworld Spider. A Spire. And Dreadsloss. A Time Before Time. Tortoise. Devil. Fema. Thrust a Spire of Slade. Up from the Underworld. Name it the Granite Citadel. And established a gateway between worlds. And Dreadsloss. In a time before time, the tortoise devil Fafima ruled from the granite citadel of the lush evil in Dreadsloss. Well, I think that's it for today. Um, now, if you like these kind of videos, you like Dwarf Fortress in general, go ahead and leave a like. If you would like to see more, you know, uh, Legends mode. I, for I keep forgetting what that's called off the top of my head. If you want to see more Legends mode, make sure you'll just leave a comment in there because this is kind of a mixed video. It's got the world building and then the Legends mode. Just some readings. If you want me to get in a little more depth, if you don't want me to skip things, and a lot of it's the same stuff, I'm going to try and do a better job reading it. And uh, so that way I could kind of mold more. I don't know, story-ish kind of sentences and stuff from it, because that's kind of hard to read. Especially when three lines could be this just about the same encounter. It's kind of weird reading it. Then if you like what I do in general, subscribe. And then, you know, you get the updates and all that stuff when you do that. The new videos and all whatnot. And, uh, make sure you check out some of my other videos. If you like, like I was saying earlier, if you like Dungeons of Endless, I got that kind of video, I got those videos, and I do just a bunch of roguelikes in general. You never know. Things like, uh, Caves of Cud. Uh, where's the other one? Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. The, uh... Wanted to play Cataclysm DDA, but I don't think I really can. If I can, I will. I like using Dextery, I don't really like using OBS, but if I have to, I will. Man, there's another game that I can't remember what it was called. Oh man, what was it? I remember opening it. Not doing it. Was it Ivan? I-V-A-N? There's another roguelike I was like, gonna try. So, uh... I'll check them out. And, uh... Why not leave a, just a comment and say hi or just anything? Liking, subscribing, and commenting all helps towards the channel to become a little bit bigger. I don't really care about it getting too big. Now just, uh, maybe to help to get it out there for people that like seeing this kind of stuff. So until next time, take care. Oh, we're going to be coming back and playing Adventure Mode soon. Then after, I think, this next play, if it's not a really quick one, I want to kind of get on a little bit more of an epic adventure. But those are kind of rare in between. Uh, far. In between. So, if it's kind of a shorter one, we'll do a couple, like, two more adventure mode playthroughs. Two more characters. But, just to let you know, Dwarf Fortress, the uh, Fortress mode is actually coming up. I got, uh, the only problem is I think with this latest version, I don't think we could use Dwarf Therapist. So if I can't get Dwarf Therapist working on this, I may either have to just do it the hard way, which isn't fun. I'm going to probably limit the number of dwarves. If I have to do it the hard way, I'm going to limit the number of dwarves because I can't do that. <laughs> and, uh, or I'm going to have to use a different version unfortunately. So we'll see how that goes. And like I said, until next time, take care.